Hey, Don Copeland here, and today we're going to talk to you a little bit about comparing uh, this whole new process called DTF with DTG to, to help you make the right decision for your business. You know, which, which piece of equipment should you add or whether or not you should supplement what you already have with another piece of equipment. So we're going to compare the DTGs like our DTG currently our G4, which we've had for a few years now, great machine. And this is our newest, this is the DTF 24H2. Uh, we also have the H4. Only difference between them is the number of heads in the machine, which is going to have to do with productivity. But we'll just go with comparison of the H2, because what I have here right now. Uh, so we'll start off with DTG. You got to look at the pros and the cons of each of the processes. DTG has been around, really got started back in 04, and uh, we at Coldesi jumped into it pretty early on, early 2005. We were involved with uh, DTG printers and have been for now 16 years plus. And uh, it's been a great, great uh, new piece of equipment, let's say, a new way of doing customization for a lot of businesses. Prior to that, really were limited to things like sublimation or some just really icky type of transfers off of your, your regular uh, inkjet printers. You didn't have the ability to do dark garments. Uh, you had a heavy feel or you were limited in materials like you are in sublimation to polyesters and things like that. And with DTG coming about, especially with the advent of white ink to them, started being able to do dark shirts, do one-off printing, really, really soft hand, um, just great output that you couldn't get, achieve any other way other than maybe really high-end uh, water-based screen printing and whatnot. So it really took off and it became kind of the standard for short-run customization of t-shirts. But it has its limitations. Probably the biggest limitation, the biggest gripe people have about direct garment printing is the fact that you have to pre-treat garments, especially dark garments where you have white ink on them. You're going to have to pre-treat them so that the white ink crashes so you can have a foundation for your color ink to go down on top of. But even nowadays, most people are also pre-treating their white shirts or light colored shirts as well. So let's talk about the difference in. When, you're going to, when I'm going to print a DTG shirt, I'm going to have to take the shirt, going to have to press it, pre-treat it, put it back in the heat press to set the pre-treat, put it onto the printer, print the shirt, take it off of the printer, put it onto the heat press again to finish the shirt off. Cure times typically for DTG are going to be in the 45 second to maybe a minute, minute and a half range, and you're going to have a similar, usually 30 to 45 seconds for the pre-treatment. So you're just alone on the pre-treatment, I mean on the heat press, you're going to have a minute and a half or more just to get one shirt done. So there's a lot of time involved there. You have to make sure you're metering your pre-treatment consistently so you can get consistent performance on the shirts from one to another, which means it's another piece of equipment generally needed. Most people have pre-treatment machines, which adds another expense, adds more maintenance to the process. It just goes on and on. As you can see, for short run stuff, it's amazing. For high, you know, really high detail, fine fade to shirt type of prints, one-offs, two-offs, amazing. It's great. If you really, really want a really soft hand, it's great. If you want to print on anything other than high cotton or blends or 100% cotton, now you start to run into challenges with DTG. Plus, you're going to take up about the same amount of footage. I did some measurements early on. This is about 6 foot by 10 foot, we say. We're taking up with this. And if I were to put a heat press, a pretreatment machine, and our DTG G4 next to each other, I mean, we're within a couple square inches of taking up the same amount of space, all right? So there's a lot, you know, you, it's not like you have to reconfigure a shop to put something like a DTF in instead of a, a, a DTG like the G4. So now let's talk about what the benefits and maybe the cons of a DTF would be. DTF printer, it is a roll-fed unit. As you can see back here, the media, we print straight onto a media, right? So your transfers come out on a roll, this machine is 24 inches wide, that's the 24 in its name, the H2 stands for two heads. And there's a lot of going into starting up and, and finishing off. In many ways, it's kind of like a reduced version of screen printing, right? Where you have time built into the setup. So for instance, when I start this printer printing, it's eight minutes until I have a finished print out the back. But from that point forward, while I'm running the whole time, it's generating transfers. So real, really the eight, the eight minutes goes on the tail end. When I've finished my last print and I'm running it through the machine, powder's being placed on it, it's going through the dryer to be finished and being taken up with the take-up roller. So there is that. If I want to do one shirt, 
This is not a practical solution, right? If I want to do one shirt, I'm going to do it on my DTG or other processes like our, our white toner lasers or things like that, right? But if I'm going to do multiple shirts, whether they're variable or maybe they're a stock design that you just you want to have 50 or 100 of them around, this is the way to go because I'm generating literally for a standard full shirt type of front print, I'm going to pr produce 100 or more of them in an hour. All right? There's no way on a DTG you're going to generate that number of output, plus you're adding press time. Right? With these, they come off as they're done. You can cut them off one at a time, press them onto shirts, or you can stack them up and print them and transfer them when you need to. Here's the other thing transfer times on these. You've got a couple seconds to press the shirt to dry it out and flatten it out. You're going to press it for 10 seconds, depending on what media you use, whether you hot peel or cold peel, and then you've got another five second press and it's done. So your dwell time under the press itself is less than 20 seconds total for the pre-press, the press, and the post-press, versus 45 seconds and 45 seconds drying the pre-treat and then drying the shirt on DTG. Huge difference in the amount of time that you have there in terms of doing it. Plus, with the DTG, you can't stack them up <laughs> until they've been pressed. With these, you print them, you trim them, you set them. When you need them, you apply them. All right, that's another benefit if you have like an online store. Over here, you have the transfers already done, an order comes in, and you need it on a, uh, you know, a red women's shirt in a medium. So I go grab the red women's shirt, throw it on the press. Less than a minute later, the whole process is done and it's ready to go. We wouldn't be anywhere near, near close to that with DTG. And heaven forbid it's a material we don't like. We, we can't print on other than over here, cotton, high, heavy cotton. Over here, we're going to be a, able to transfer it to polyesters, to per, you know, performance wear, to, to cotton, to hemp, to all the same materials you can over there, plus the performance wear, the polyesters and the, and the synthetics as well. So there is that. But there's still a balancing act. What is your business about? Is your business about custom one-offs? You know, pictures of kids thrown on a shirt for grandma, uh, only doing a few at a time, but you're getting high dollars for the shirt. DTG is probably the way to go. But if you're doing any higher volume and on a consistent basis, and maybe you have stock designs that you do that are your own designs and whatnot, this is definitely the way to go. Money-wise, it's not that big of a difference. When you start to look at what a, a system costs, maybe a 10 or 20% difference maximum between the two. And realistically, by the time you throw in heat presses and stuff, DTG can actually get more expensive than DTF. DTF can be a business unto itself, generating transfers for wholesale. Not really DTG, especially in a one-off, two-off machine type of situation, not really a great marketplace to do wholesale work for other, other businesses. Because generally people who are looking for you to do wholesale work for you, don't want to pay you for the shirt, <laughs> right? They want to have their own shirts. So with this, I can knock off a roll that's got a, a hundred pieces in it and make a couple dollar, three dollar per transfer profit on it. They're happy, I'm happy, ran my machine for an hour, made 300 bucks. So kind of starting to see a difference now, hopefully, in where your decision process has to go. Do you need higher volume? Are you looking to do wholesale work, right? Can you justify this? Because you want to start the machine and you want to run it. My DTG, if, as long as I've got the heat press on, I get a job in, I can grab a shirt and pretty quickly be up and running, knock out that one shirt and be done, or knock out three or four shirts and be done. Over here, I want to try to run the machine continual all at one time. I take the work that I've got, I want to set it up in the software, print 10, 15, 20 feet, get the next job spooled up and keep it going and running because that eight minutes I talked about, that all gets absorbed into the whole job. So if I have to start this machine five times a day from scratch, I'm wasting 40 minutes of time. If I start the machine once a day and run all those jobs at one time, I only wait, waste eight minutes. And it allows me to, to get it, get in, get it done, and get out. So there's your comparison, DTG versus DTF. Decision is yours. Realistically, you probably need two types anyway, but it certainly allows you to know which is the next piece of equipment to make your next purchase for.